Ed Cohan, it's normally said Cohen, Director of Audio at the Bauer Media Group, Phil Fernley, BBC's Director of Homepage, and the host, someone who knows all about this, she was a business reporter, Radio 4, Sonali Shah. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. Well, I'm loving these Soho-esque chairs. Mm. Will I be able to get out of it at the end? Yeah. Hide my microphone. <laughs> you know, just for the photo. Welcome to this session on big data. I think Paddy summed it up well. Um, uh, I did used to be a business reporter way back in the day, but yes, now can be found on Radio 4. Um, we hope to give you a bit of insight into data collection and usage and how it can power your decision making. Um, and in a m moment, we will be hearing from Ed Kahan, Kahan, <laughs> Director of Audio from the Bauer Media Group, and Phil Fernley here, the Director of the BBC Homepage and My BBC. I need my clicker. I do apologise. Is it there? Oh, there you go. Um, we're going to start off with a bit of a numbers quiz. Um, and there are some big numbers involved. Here they are. 244 million for Amazon, 3.5 billion for Google, and 4 billion for Facebook. So just have a think about what, how you think those numbers relate to the businesses involved, and we will come back to that a little bit uh, later. In the meantime, we're going to explore what the term big data actually means. It can be open to a lot of interpretation, but here's one that IBM have come up with. I'll let you have a quick scan of that. But actually, it's not just the term big data that's open to interpretation. It's, it's what you do with all this data that's being constantly created by each and every one of us that makes, makes the difference and can empower you in, in your audience insights, really. And a quick show of hands, how many of you have used one of these? So pretty much everyone in the room. Well, figures just released by the Payments Council shows that now over half of retail transactions are cashless. So cash is no longer king, really. And that's partly down to this contactless technology. And those transactions are so much easier to analyze, of course, uh, and gives us a deeper insight than someone looking through receipts and, and, and the cash in the till. How many of you have got one of these? Not as many as I thought. Ooh, maybe people not admitting to having them on their keychain. Um, how many of you thought that the point of them was to give you £2.50 off your shopping every now and then? <laughs> yeah, see, there's at least two people in the room. Actually, um, this is when Tesco collects data from you. So having a club card actually means that you are providing Tesco with data about what products you buy, how frequently you buy them, and in how much bulk, um, where you shop, how much you spend. And then it lets them build up a picture, of course, as you as a shopper, and then helps them track regular shopping trends. I don't mind it so much because I get money off things I buy, but a lot of people might find it a little bit freaky that you're being watched all the time. Next one. How many of you have bought something off iTunes? Almost everyone, again. Um, <laughs> When you've ticked that terms and conditions box, I mean, how many of you actually read it? We, we kind of trust that it'll be fine, won't you? Um, you've all agreed for this data to be taken uh, from you. And actually, if you look at the wording, it's really, I mean, it's been written by a very clever lawyer. Um, you know, including but not limited to technical information and periodically and things like that. Apple and, and iTunes terms and conditions are very comprehensive, um, as I'm sure many of you will be aware of. How many of you use, use Sky? Not that many. Hmm. Um, Sky can collect a lot of data from your box. They really, really know everything, which programs you watch. Um, for how long, how much you fast forward and rewind, everything. So any fans of those sort of late night channels at the end of the EPG, they know. <laughs> they know. <laughs> so you get the picture, or rather, all these companies are building up a really comprehensive picture of you, your day-to-day -day behaviors, and, and we are generating so much data just just by living without really even thinking about it, to be honest. Now, with all this big data out there, we're going to hear from two people who are leading the way and plowing through it all. Good luck. Um, to help 
give you a better experience as a consumer. So, and before we hear from Phil, though, let's go back to those big numbers. So Amazon, the latest information was actually released two years ago that it had 244 million active customers. So actually, they'll have a lot more right now. Google has approximately 3.5 billion searches per day. And Facebook now see 4 billion video views per day. So well done to those of you who got those right. Um, so with all this data swimming around, it of course needs to be interpreted. Um, and there's one digital platform I'm guessing most of us have uh, used at some point, the BBC website, and here to tell us more about how data is changing, how the BBC is delivering content. Please welcome Phil Fernley, the director of BBC Homepage <laughs> and my BBC. Thank you very much. Um, so the journey for us started about two and a half years ago. Um, it wasn't really a big data program that we set out to, uh, to deliver. Tony Hall said, uh, in the world that we live in today, we need to transform the relationship we have with our, with our audiences, our viewers, our listeners, our customers. And we took that as a challenge to do three things. One is to um, take what was our online portfolio and, and maybe just show of hands those who do go on bbc.co.uk or .com or see an app every single week. Okay. And how many of you have got a BBC identity? Oh, awesome. I was going to sell it to you, and I don't need to. I need to sell it to some of you. Um, so the first thing is that our, uh, our online portfolio, everybody two and a half years ago got pretty much exactly the same. You got exactly the same news service, the same sports service, the same iPlayer, irrespective of, of who you were or what you were doing. The second thing we wanted to do was to, to change the nature of our marketing and audience activities and become much more uh, attuned to the way that we communicate with people and make that a two-way conversation rather than just advertising. And then the third thing was to maybe look at the data that we, we would have and to see whether that would make, uh, a, make us make different or support different decision making as far as commissioning, scheduling and the way that we, we run our business. So the first thing is um, just to show you some of the things that we've done. So my sport uh, is, is a, the personalized part of uh, the, the, the sport product, sport online and the sport app. You can do every, anything from uh, setting what, pro, uh, what um, content you wanted to see on your homepage, whether that's uh, like me, basketball, sailing, rugby, uh, cricket, etc. But it also allows you to choose whether you wanted goal alerts, uh, a lineup alert from a football match, or to see the, uh, the medal awards for the Olympics and the Paralympics for any of the countries that were competing. We've got My News, the 64,000 different topics that you can select from My News, anything from Brexit and ISIS to cybersecurity and beyond. Again, uh, not just not replacing the, the main news headlines, but supporting that and balancing both editorial curation and uh, things that are of interest to you. And then the third thing there is, uh, is iPlayer, of course. And iPlayer now on 10,000 different devices. Uh, you can do a number of things. You can pause on one device and resume on another one. You can select favorites and have them on one device and have the same favorites follow you on any of those other devices. If you go into BBC Store and make a purchase through BBC Store, you can see those programs and make them, uh, make them play out through iPlayer. All of that's possible because we understand who you are if you're, in a, if you're signed in. We've also released other things. We think one of the biggest things that we're trying to do is, is to make uh, content discovery as easy as possible. So things like... Uh, personalized notifications. If you look at personalized notifications, I looked at mine this morning. Uh, I, I follow Calvin Harris as a, uh, I thought anybody was, people might have laughed at that point, but <laughs> it's true. Uh, I am a Calvin Harris fan. Uh, and there was a, um, uh, three days ago on uh, the Radio 1 Breakfast Show, there was a video that was played out with Calvin Harris. It's not a place I would have gone and visited. It's not a piece of video I would have seen. Uh, it's a very simple notification that comes up and tells me there's some content that might be of interest to me. And that content comes to me because of things that I've said. I've said I, I like Calvin Harris. So those notifications allow you not just to follow artists. There are people laughing now. Uh, not just they were the people artists. that were laughing inside earlier. Okay, yeah. You've just Calvin Harris permission. fans as well. Uh, uh, but also, uh, if there's a program on iPlayer uh, that, you're, that you favorited and the latest episode is now on iPlayer, it will also notify you there. So making this content more easily available. On the, on the top there is uh, recommendations. Because we understand what your consumption is on, on iPlayer, we started off showing recommendations on the, on the BBC homepage. So what did you see in iPlayer? We made recommendations on, iPlayer, uh, on the homepage. 
when we first started this, we used to have a, a, a bit of the, the real estate on the homepage that said most popular. And the most popular programs on iPlay were always the same. It was always EastEnders, and then it followed by Doctor, Ho Doctor Who, Paul Dart, Sherlock, you name your big program of the week. It really wasn't <coughs> uh, doing anything. We know that when we put personalized recommendations, i.e. content recommended to you based on what you've consumed, we get a 20% uplift in the, in the people who click through to those programs. So we now have that on iPlayer, and it's now on the homepage of iPlayer, and it's doing extraordinarily well for us. We've also launched some personalized apps. So the music app there, um, uh, we launched earlier this year. Music, you can now favorite tracks, artists, stations, uh, genres. Uh, all of that content then gets uh, surfaced and presented to you. That app uh, and the content that you've selected in there is also available on the, on the, uh, on the desktop site as well. So everything we do, if you're assigned in, allows you to see, uh, see that, uh, irrespective of, of which part of the BBC online you're coming to. Bite Size, another one. We made it easy for people to um, select what topics they were studying for GCSEs, and rather than having the total curriculum made available to them, which is really, really complicated to, uh, to, to follow, uh, we, we make it now just simply based on what it is that you're studying and what you've told us. The other one that's on there at the bottom, BBC Plus, we launched in beta about three months ago. Uh, this has got 60 different editorial uh, choices. Again, we're allowing you as a user to, uh, to make selections. And we've rolled it out across our marketing estate. So now we can, we can use the same kind of recommendations in our email newsletters. We've got, uh, of the 7 million plus people who have signed in and, and who have got a BBC ID and who are active on a regular basis on, online, 1.3 million of those have said, yes, we want marketing. Uh, we want you to kind of uh, email me with, with relevant content. This allows us to bring the totality of the BBC content, whether it's radio, TV, or online content, whether it's a, a program or a brand that you're interested. We now tailor those recommendations based on what, what audience group you're in. Uh, we can tailor those uh, based on both segments and your individual preferences. We make that uh, the same content and the same system available whether we're doing pre-roll ads, whether we're doing a piece of content on the bottom, bottom footer, or whether we're doing that within the newsletter. So a, a complete 360. And we're starting to use the same technology and the same uh, understanding of our audiences uh, to uh, look at um, supporting commissioning decisions uh, around individual programs. I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to I'm going to skip those. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at that point. The last thing, the last thing I'd say is uh, so what? So why are we, why are we doing it? What have we achieved? We know that those people who have been signed in, so that's seven million plus people, on average consume between twenty and forty percent more content every week than people who aren't signed in, and that's not online content that they're consuming more of. That's more content, whether it's TV content watched on the TV or radio content listened to on a on a dab radio or whether that's online content. So we know that when we get the content discovery right for those people, and, it, and we feel like we're getting it increasingly right, we're making a significant difference to what they consume and the breadth of content that they get from the BBC. Thank Phil, you. thank you very much. So time to hear from um, Ed Kahan, Director of Audio. Here you go. That's on that stand, actually. At uh, the Bauer Media Group, and how data helps um, them connect with new and existing audiences. Thanks, Sonali. Hi, everyone. So, I think this, just a quick intro for those of you who know uh, Bauer for Radio, we're actually a global media group and we've got a very successful web and print publishing divisions. And one of the things about that is that the data we get from these actually ties together to give a really rich picture of our audiences, gives a huge amount of insight which allows us to make some really great choices for the audiences. We're the number one broadcaster in Europe and we're all just also the UK's number one publisher. So... What does that actually mean? For us, it's all about connecting with our audiences. This is, uh, I like to think of it as smart data, and smart data rather than big data is really about people. It's not about products, it's not about technology. And what's going on, this is the new wave of radio listening. These people are listening, it's still got a community feel, but they're listening uh, individually and listening privately. This is the old radio, this is the new radio, it's also mobile. What that means is that there's a huge amount of listening that's going on where the data is being pulled back in. I think probably in the UK, Absolute Radio, uh, I can see a few of the team here are the kind of ones who led the kind of cultural change on this. What it means is that actually across Bauer, there are dashboards which give you aggregated real-time views uh, down to show, programming, even track level of what's going on on the apps and on the websites. The other thing about this is that 
50% of the people listening to Absolute, and we also have login across our other apps, are actually listening and have created an account, just like Phil's talking about with my BBC. This means that we're there, and we know the, uh, their age, their gender, their location, what device they're listening on. We can map that against the data and what they're doing. But what do we actually turn that into? Well, the trick with this is that the, uh, you've got the granular data, but there's also a great insight team at Bauer who map in the traditional interview and survey-based research that we do, which allows us to come up with two things. So if you imagine you've got a, a passive way of... Uh, using data, you can give people a uh, perhaps more appropriate content from the content you've already got in your system, and you're saying, we recommend this to you. And that's one way of looking at it. But actually what's going on is that by tying this together across the piece, uh, we're actually saying that we can actually generate the best content for you as well. So what we're doing is we're looking at saying actively we can make big content decisions about it, and that has got a huge implications from a commercial point of view as well. So commercially speaking, InStream, which is our uh, market-leading advertising product, allows us to create content which thinks about you as individuals in audiences, and we take the messages out there. And for, it's all about basically um, having the, the best content, the right content, the right ad at the right time for the right person. Thank you. I'll keep it short because I think we're short of time. So. Thank you very much. We are almost out of time. So if, does anyone have any burning questions for our two guests? That's good. Um, <laughs> just because we are out of time. But I was going to just ask um, you, uh, Phil, when it comes to you know, what we saw Capital Extra doing, mm. is there scope for something like that with Radio 1, for example? So I, I know you're doing your own kind of yeah, stuff I mean, with Radio 1. We are, but I, I, a couple of things. One is, you know, we see that, that you know our audiences come to uh, the BBC not just for a single station or a single channel or a single program, and, and therefore the thing that we built is, a, is something that joins up their consumption across all of those mm. those things. So we'd rather do something that was a bit more pervasive than a, than a, than a single thing. So you know they're interested in music or they're they're interested in a variety of our content. So we see them, and we can therefore recommend content to them or we can notify them of those things. Having said that, will we bring it? Will we bring more, pers even mm. more personalization to, to stations? To individual stations, to absolutely. Um, Ed, when it comes to you know, you've got this in-stream technology being rolled out across your Bauer brands. Do you think we'll see a point where actually that, that linear stream of advertising on air just becomes redundant because it's just not targeted enough? I think um, airtime advertising is enormously powerful because of the scale of the reach that it gives. Right. But as you've seen. We, we think of in-stream as being just as important for the fact that we can uh, create custom uh, messaging, custom advertising for the, the different audiences. And so it's not just about having a, a name here and a name there. It's about the um, kind of coming together of uh, different creative with being the targeting as well. I'm sorry that we are out of time. I hope you've got something out of that 20-minute session about big data, what it can do, and maybe has got you thinking about what you can do with the data that you can collect. Thank you very much to both of my guests, um, Ed Kahan from Bauer and uh, Calvin Harris fan, Phil Fernley <laughs> from the BBC. How do you feel about Taylor Swift? <laughs> Firmly in the Calvin Harris. <laughs>